G'day guys, Adam here at Silhouette Park Farm. Now, um, we got a couple of comments on our bacon video that we recently put out, and it's they're all about smokers and that sort of thing, uh, about making sure uh, but what sort of smoker you use? Are they homemade and all the rest of it? Obviously behind us there, you can actually see that's one of our smokers going at the moment. And it is homemade. We've got a couple of commercial smokers for fish smokers and things like that as well. But we use these ones most because they're big. You can put large amounts of meat in them and they cook beautifully. So uh, the big key things that you want to stick with if you're if you're making hams, bacons, if you're doing any uh, any cured meats, if you're just even if you're just doing a roast or something like that in your smoker, is to make sure that you have a good heat source uh, that you can put your smoke in, that you can shut down, that you can run your smoke through. Uh, the other side of it is make sure you use a good brine. So we use a, we use a maple based brine. It's a commercially bought brine uh, that I buy. I could make my own and mix up my pink salts and all that stuff for, for safety. And uh, you've got to have a nitrate level for safety reasons in Australia. If we want to sell any bacon on, we have to commercially have that nitrate in there. So, uh, so if you want uh, nitrate free, which we've made nitrate free stuff before, uh, it's for personal consumption only, so that's a, that's a whole nother ballpark. But um, our smokers, uh, the other side of it, sorry, is to make sure that you have the timbers you like. Uh, we like using apple wood, we like using hickory and mystique. Um, we also use some different iron barks. Uh, there's some different timbers that we use, Australian timbers that we use as well, which are absolutely beautiful for smoking. So uh, we do use a mixture when we're doing different stuff. Um, and the other side is your smoker. So just there, you can see behind us there, it is all about having a heat source that you can punch out some beautiful, beautiful heat into a beautiful, beautiful bit of meat. Check out this smoker. All it is, is an old locker. Like literally, it's an old locker. And um, we'll start, we'll work at the bottom and work our way up. You can actually see there we've got a hole cut in the bottom and we've got a fire in there at the moment uh we go through and there's actually a vent in the top you can see there so that actually uh lets the smoke out as it's going now we put a temperature gauge into the side of it as well so that's sitting just above 200 degrees celsius at the moment that is pretty hot in there uh that's the midway up now we'll open it up and have a look so we've got a handle there we can just turn and open there we go heat we've got our our natural heat coming up through and we have our smoke coming out the top which is absolutely awesome so let that shut down and um yeah we'll uh get some more smoky goodness out of there check that out smoke starting to come out again and yummy 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 so i've opened it up so that temperature dropped very quickly there but that'll pick up again and it'll stay constant just by having a good constant fire under there. So that is one of our smokers that we use, the locker smoker. Uh, don't You can pick them up cheap and you don't really have to worry about, um, don't really have to worry about huge expense to build yourself a smoker. Like you can literally use anything. I actually know people that have used a, a um, tin shed and put an outside box to build a cold smoker on them. So uh, get in all your angles right and yeah, just a great way to do it. So there you go. That's one of our smokers. Now I've done a video on this one before and uh, this is the fish smoker that I used in a video recently. We did the fish wings in and uh, it's a little commercially bought thing. They're small, compact. You can actually do all sorts of stuff in. You can take this top rack out if you want to do hams or bacons and you have heaps of room in there to actually smoke larger things. So you can smoke all different stuff in these small smokers. If it's just for one person or it's one slice of meat, if you go into the butcher shop and you bought yourself a um, piece of pork belly and you want to have a go at turning it into bacon, 
if you've done a dry cure or a wet cure and made one at home, you can use one of these smokers and smoke it just as well as with any of the other things. So uh, they're there, they're compact, they're easy to use. There you go. They clip into place. Look at that, the lid's all there, ready to go. They're easy to fuel up. They just use any of your um, any of your alcohol fuels and you put your wood chips in and you're off and ready to go so there you go that is the little commercial smoker that we use our fish smoker and um, we'll go move on to the next one this is the smoker that my dad built me uh, it is an old steel gas tank uh, you can see there it's a uh, pretty thick steel it's a uh, like I said an old gas tank the doors have been cut in, we've got a firebox on one side and it's open straight through to the other side. Now I'll put a stainless steel rack in there because I'm using heat beads at the moment. Um, and then I've got a stainless steel rack there, it's dirty but it's stainless steel. That's solid steel, uh, that's uh, railway spikes and railway pins uh, that we've done there and fired and cleaned and all the rest of it. So this is all ready to go and we've got some heat beads heating up at the moment to get a second lot of bacon on. Uh, we do all of our eye bacon, uh, hams, beef briskets, all of that sort of stuff in this one because we can control the temperature. That's the biggest thing is we can actually open this door by um, using this door and having it open to different levels. We can control the amount of air coming in and we also got a hole down here that we can use to control the air coming in and out. So it's pretty dirty on the outside. I normally just leave that one there wide open and it's good to go. Um, the best thing about this one is you can control your temperatures. Uh, we actually don't have a temperature gauge in this. We go all by feel and it's absolutely beautiful to cook with. Um, we do all, of, like I said, all of our beef briskets, all of that sort of stuff in here, lamb ribs, pork ribs, all of that. And it just cooks wonderfully. It is such a good smoker, um, but it is homemade. It's rough as guts. So only advice we'll give if you, uh, doing any of these make sure that you use all stainless steel screws and that sort of stuff use your stainless steel hinges um, this one here's a straight steel hinge if you use stainless steel they don't um, they don't go like this and rust so we've got st straight steel in there and uh, what you do is actually cut that top one put your hinge in and then cut the rest of your door and that way it's perfect fit every single time uh, if you're doing a gas bottle like that make sure you fill your gas bottle with water same at this side you can see here that we've got here we've used steel and um, these were painted steel but yep put them into there cut the top one put your hinges in then cut the rest and it will just go like that absolutely beautiful and fit perfect every time uh, but yeah that is like I said a homemade smoker and you really don't need a lot of money. You can pick up one of these gas bottles for next to nothing uh, from anywhere, really. So if you go to an old old gas bottle place, they'll have um, old gas bottles there for sure. Uh, the other thing we can do in here as well is we can actually take this rack here out completely. Uh, we can put all of our heat, our fire, into the bottom of there. We can leave it fully open, and then we can take one of our barbecue plates and set it into there. So it's um, just another way of having a barbecue as well. And it's just a great way to cook. They really are absolutely amazing fun to have a go at and amazing to have a go at there. Uh, the other thing I recommend for anybody using smoker is one of these. Check that out, that is a heat bead lighter. Now there is so much heat coming out of it at the moment. I was just standing next to it and my leg is uh, getting pretty warm. Those heat beads, they'll start turning white on top soon and they'll be ready to go in. Highly recommended if you're going to use heat beads to get an exact exact um, heat source going into your fire. Uh, the other thing we use as well is the Wooshka, which you all know about. We've used this many times. It's pretty dirty at the moment because we were cooking on it last night and I hadn't cleaned up yet. But uh, there's a new attachment coming that we're saving up for to go on top of here. And it's actually a smoker pizza oven that attaches directly over the top of the Wooshka. So that means we'll have a uh, three large smokers that we can use we've also got a gas pizza oven that we use as well um, and you can also use the weber as a smoker if you'd like to this is my weber q 
that is <laughs> this is the baby weather cue uh it's clean in there at the moment as a, there's a there's a lizard hello little mate you get out of there hey no don't go in there okay he's in there we'll have to get him out in a minute um but yeah there's our weather cue now you can actually put whatever you want in there use the uh, roasting racks like that it's a brand new roasting rack that we've just got for this um put your put your whatever your meat is whatever your your ham bacon whatever whatever you want to cook in there if you've got a barbecue like this any covered barbecue you can actually buy yourself a heat box like i've got in that large smoker over there you can actually put that directly on on the side you can move this to the side like so. so that can sit over there like that you can put uh, your box over here with your wood chips and have it in there close it all down and that will work like a perfectly good smoker and you can just cook away. It's it's really that simple. You can use whatever you've got at home. You can make a new one. You can buy a commercial smoker. Um, but yep, there's heaps of options for a smoker out there. Now I said about these heat beads before, you can see there, look at the heat. You can feel the heat coming off them. They're red and glowing inside and they're all turned white. It means that they're ready to go and go into the smoker. So what we do is we grab by the handle here because we can pick them up and move them around wherever you need to move them and hopefully not burn yourself and then uh, we can tip them into here and get them into the tray and it's super hot there we go that's super hot in there ah, put that down so i don't burn myself <laughs> nearly got the foot and um, look at that heaps of heat in there and we're about to get this smoker fired up as well and get some um get some porky goodness going into there make sure that's around the right way it goes a certain way there you go get our tray in there look at that now we've got heaps of goodness all ready to go heaps of heat and you can see that start to smoke up a little bit already and that'll smoke up very very quickly as soon as we throw some wood chips in there now check out that like i said we've got those heat beads in there we've got that beautiful bit of cured pork in there ready to go check that out that's straight out of the brine a little bit of a pat down and uh ready to go now we've got some of these uh wood chips and that one this one here is uh what's that hickory there it is hickory and mystique and so we'll uh grab a handful of these check this out a handful of wood chips there and we'll just shove them onto under there like that with another handful and see how much smoke and uh, heat that's putting in there straight away and we'll just like i said that's up on that tray we'll shut the lid down and look at that so we have heaps of heat heaps of smoke coming through check out the chimney it's all coming out through there and this is coming through the whole system and we can uh, shut this down a little bit and uh, we'll leave that open a little bit we'll get a little bit of a stick in there hold it out and that'll uh, keep some heat and cook away beautifully in there just a beautiful beautiful way to cook your meat now some people might wonder why you actually smoke your meat um, it's Basically, it's a way of food preservation. It makes your pork last a lot longer. If you do a dry cure and do some dry curing methods, it's how you make the old school bacon that they used to hang up in the kitchen that doesn't need refrigeration. Modern bacons and hams have a pinky color to them, and that's because they use a nitrate level in them. Uh, that nitrate level helps uh, prevent bugs and, uh, and spoiling of the meat. So it's a great way to uh to keep your pork and different different meats a lot longer old school uh, the old school ways of doing it without the nitrates the bacon actually comes out a light brown color it's a completely different colored meat and uh, we've got a video coming on that very very soon so um, it's just another way of preserving your meat um, it's a food preservation method and it's absolutely delicious. That's the most important thing. So it's become a staple uh, around the world for all different people, but it, it was originally done as a food uh, food preservation technique. And um, the uh, technology has just got better and better over the years. And now we've got these things and beautiful, beautiful meat to eat. 
Another super, super important thing to have while you are smoking meat is a thermometer. I've got this little digital thermometer. It's a cheap one and it works great. It's simple. Yeah, just take the little cap off the end, stick it in the meat, press on, and it gives you a temperature. Uh, you can send, set it to uh, degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. And um, yeah, it's just a great way great way to get all your temperatures right. So at the moment, was it about 24 degrees out here? So there you go. That's what it is, 24 degrees Celsius outside. Uh, and this is winter, folks. This is winter out here for us. So if you want to see what that is in Fahrenheit for the people at home, there you go. It is uh, 77.3 and it's the end of our winter at the moment. So back to Celsius for me. There you go. Now, um, the reason that we use a thermometer is we need the internal temperatures of the meat to be the right temperatures. Depending on what the meat you're cooking is, uh, those temperatures change. Um, so the, what we're looking for at the moment with the pork is for our internal temperature to be around about, um, I aim for around about 65 to 68. Um, so anywhere between 65 and 70 degrees makes it safe to be uh, eaten and consumed and means it's cooked all the way through. So that's what we're looking at for an internal temperature. And um, yep, there you go. The Probably I would say the most important thing if you're going to be smoking meats, uh, especially if you're doing hams and bacons, is a thermometer. I just, I just got a little bit distracted and we've got these two chunks of bacon here. They are sitting at 66 degrees Celsius. I think you can, don't know whether you can see that or not there. There you go, 66 degrees Celsius. And that's the internal temperature and they're ready to go. They're, they look pretty dark, they're around the edges and all that, but they're skin's still super soft and i'm going to put those into the cold room get them nice and cool and then we'll um get our next lot on but they're looking beautiful so i've, I've just sliced up one of those bits of um, bacon and that's them frying away in the uh, pan at the moment we just had a little taste test and um friend of Nettie's back our vet is up today and she just had a taste as well call out what was the uh Beck said it was the best thing she's ever eaten so there you go don't think she wants to be on camera do you Beck? no, no she doesn't <laughs>